Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's play some Battle Brothers, shall we? Resuming our complete beginner's guide, after completing the contract killing Hoggart, now it's time to go exploring, maybe try to find some new brothers to recruit, some more ranged weapons, and get a good contract. Now, as we're just outside of town, this event pops up, and this will happen when it's time for you to choose your ambition. Your ambition is kind of like another goal that the game gives you that shapes the narrative for your team and gives you a sense of uh, a new objective to complete independent of uh, potentially the contracts that are around. So like you have this overarching ambition to raise up uh, the power level, the respect level, the renown of your brotherhood. So sitting and jesting with the men while they check their kit, hone their blades and mend their armor, your mind wanders off to thinking about new ideas and improving the company and its reputation across the lands. What is your conclusion and what do you tell the men? So we get to choose. Do we want to set out into the wilderness, discover the unknown and plunder it? Um, and so we could go out and find just a random location, a wizard's tomb, a goblin camp, or anything else, and, and take it down. And if we do this, you can see right here in this kind of like scroll above these two options at the bottom, it tells you what your task would be. And then it says for a reward, your renown will increase, which as you get higher renown, you get higher pay for contracts, and you can get new types of contracts, which is exciting. But the other option says... Um, we need allies. Forging a bond of friendship and trust with one of the towns will get the company better prices, more volunteers, and steady work. And I like this one because better prices is very important to me. And getting more men to choose from to hire, and it raises your renown. So what this does is basically tell you, hey, go to towns, do contracts for those towns, and you will build up your rep within the town and become potentially friendly with them or improve your relations and complete this ambition. And so I think this is a one that I like to do, but if instead you wanna just go off on your own, not do contracts, just explore, then you could pick this one. I'm gonna do this one. And so now once you choose a renown, in the upper left, this trophy icon illuminates and tells you what your uh, ambition quest is, and you can mouse over it to see details about the task. You can also right click and cancel the ambition if you don't like it, and then after a certain amount of time, I believe the game will give you an option to choose a new ambition if you're just not having any luck with the current ambition you've chosen. So I'm going to go up to Mulkberg again and see what they've got. There's a trading caravan coming along with us. Okay, and let's see. All right, so it's nighttime, and the contracts are locked here because uh, you could see this is a mate. This is the bigger city. It's got walls. It's got a settlement. So we're not high enough rep. Now, what does this say? They've been raided. Uh, so ooh, they've lost goods, supplies, and lives were lost. So that's bad for us trying to buy stuff here. So that's not ideal. So we can look for another town. And what we want to do when we look for another town is try to find a city that doesn't have walls around it, that's not as big, um, like perhaps this one, although they're on fire, it appears, so that we can actually attempt a contract for them. But we can look around, we could go down here, and we're not beholden to any, you know, particular town. Uh, yeah, let's just go down here, I guess. It, it looks like it's a straight shot on the road. So I'm going to move us this way. It will take some time to get here, but we can uncover uh, some of the map. And I'm going to uh, speed it up so we can run down there. The disadvantage, of course, strategically about heading this far down through Sunreach to uh, Salt Kai is that it just takes a while. And we have to pay our people and feed them. You can see our food is starting to run low. And then there's nothing else really down here for us to do unless we take a boat ride. So that is certainly a consideration. And we arrive in the town, and look at this. There's a one-star contract, which is great. 
And this town has a barber, okay, so you can change the appearance of your folk. Marketplace, a tavern. Uh, they have the harbor, which we saw, and they've got some folk we can hire. So, uh, what's this? Ooh, they've had disappearing villagers. So, um, there's less recruits and people uh, will deal less favorably with strangers, which is what we are. But if we build up our rep, we can get over that. Now, let's just see what they have in the marketplace. They do have uh, a quiver of arrows. And we happen to have an extra bow. So what this could mean is that if we buy this quiver of arrows and we use it with the bow that we got in the Hoggart fight, we could get three ranged characters, which is incredibly desirable. So I'm going to buy that. It's not expensive for that quiver of arrows. Let's see if they have any cheap food. Uh, this Their stuff is rather expensive, sadly. Uh, the fish isn't horribly priced, so I'm going to buy some just to get some food. Now, you'll see that they have amber shards. Sometimes villages will sell these trade goods, and you can make a lot of money going between towns to find someone who will buy this, you know, at a higher price. These are too expensive for us to buy right now, but it's worth your while if you want to play Battle Brothers as an economic game to really write down what towns have what, what towns are desiring what, so that you can um, make money just trading goods between areas. So that's certainly something that you can consider. Uh, let's see. We're okay on everything else. Just always check the price of ammunition, of supplies. Everything here is really, really expensive. So these prices are bad, and we're just going to go ahead and leave this, these choices so that we can see what this contract is. Now, I want the one skull contract. I want something easy. So this is a negotiations. It says, Garo, the trade master, is looking out the window when you find him. There's a goblet in his hand, and there's nothing but silence outside. He turns to you almost somber. When you came here, did you realize how quiet it was? You remarked that you did. And he says, um, unfortunately, it isn't that people are afraid of you. Not this time. We've had uh, been attacked these past weeks. Beasts of some sort are on the loose. We know not what they are, but only who they take. We've pleaded with our lord, but he's done nothing to help us. So he wants us to go hunt the monsters down. And this is what has been making the villagers disappear. So a lot of the times you can get contracts that will solve problems in the village, boost your relations, and then change the status of the village from like missing villagers to, to something more favorable, which will benefit you. So you can either say, no thank you, or you can probe and you could say, what's it worth to you? And he's going to pay us 380 crowns. So at this point, you can negotiate. You can say, I accept, or you could be like, I want more money, I want money in advance, or you can bail. If you negotiate, you might be able to get more money, but you will get less relations in the town. So early on, I like to just accept the offer, and because getting a better relationship is more favorable to me than a few extra crowns. So I say, I accept the offer, and he says, hunt down what terrorizes Salt Kai. And you can still bail at this point. You could say, I need time to think about this or, um, you know, to, to not decline it, but just leave it on the table, but think about it or decline it outright or accept. Now, I'm going to accept it. So now we've accepted this contract and I'm going to um, push I to go to our inventory because uh, I want to get one more potential person on our team that will be in the back row shooting. So let's see who they have to choose from. Um, they have some okay people here uh, that have, like, you know, this is a killer on the run. This is an uh, anatomist. Now, this is uh, a grave digger. This guy's like dirt cheap, Gunpert. So I think I'm going to hire Gunpert because he's so cheap. And then just see how good he turns out to be. And if he dies, well, then there you go. So, Gumpert, what's your stats? Um, he's bad with a bow. Anybody better with a bow? Actually, Ferdinand's not bad. Now, our good, like, our higher level brothers are going to be good, but um, he's not that bad. All right, so we're just going to see how he does if we give the guy a bow. And we can give him uh, a sword, you know, as a backup weapon. We don't need to give him 
better armor or a hat or anything because he's going to be in the back row, so it's totally fine. But now look at our balanced formation. We, you know, um, we have three in the back, and then we have a good front line to block the people in, in the back row. So I like this a good bit. And I'm going to go ahead and um, save the game. Now what we want to do, you see these wolf prints down here. This is what you want to follow to see what's terrorizing the town. Um, but I want to actually camp a bit. I'm just pushing T to camp, and I'm passing time. And the reason I'm doing this is because, here we go, here's the, oh, okay, there's Dire Wolves. That's actually what we need right there. You see how it has the quest emblem on it? So we need to fight these three Dire Wolves. Now, these are going to be difficult, but they're up here. And I want it to be daytime so that my ranged characters can actually have a chance against them. So we're going to just right-click and start moving and following them. Now, at this point, I am going to save the game. And you can do this or you can not do this. You have you might have a different propensity for like saving um, to see how the battle goes and learn something. If you don't want to save scum, then don't save it. Just run at it. I don't save scum aggressively, but this is a very hard game. So it could be brutal if you lose, you know, some people that you really care about or the battle just goes really badly for you in terms of the RNG. So just based on your own particular appetite of how much you want to save the game, uh, before you get into a big encounter, I recommend just trying it. And then if you don't want to load and you want to just roll with it, the game is kind of meant to be played on the more people are going to die. And you're not going to get through perfectly. But sometimes it can be so brutal that, uh, you know, it could dissuade you from playing the game at all. So just make your own choice on how often you want to save and load. I'm going to save it just to try to give us a chance here to see what the fight is like and see if we need to completely change like do we need more people do we want to use different weapons like what do we think different time of day um and so now we've got it saved and we can go head up there and fight these dire wolves all right wolves here we come oh okay well or not go get them all right so they're moving into a, kind of a swampier area which i don't care for but it's still midday oh come on now here we go let's go I didn't want them to come, like, so far that it was nighttime. All right, look at that. Okay, so these things are right on us, and they're coming down to the bottom. Now, we do have some elevation up here. So one thing that we could try to do is move these wolves. Uh, we could try to leverage this elevation, and you can tell elevation by using these buttons up here or the plus and minus key. So we can, um, for example, if I push minus, then you see how all of these taller tiles have been shaded out. So these people are on one floor. And if I push plus, then this these tiles appear. So we'd like to get up to these plus tiles if we could. But I don't know how viable that would be. Now they've all acted. But what would end up happening is we'd have two people kind of on an island. The, the ranged people could fight. And we could switch somebody, you know, to a pitchfork. On the other tile, maybe. Yeah, but it's my other archer anyway. Um, yeah, it's not ideal. So instead, let's just see how much damage we can do firing right here we have a 48 percent chance to hit 48 percent chance to hit let's just focus fire on this dire wolf right here all right we got a hit we'll reload and we'll wait and then we can if we want to commit we can move everyone down like these people down to the right here and then kind of get this one and block off this one. But I'm going to wait because I want all of my ranged people to fire first. Because if I start moving our brothers down, then our ranged characters won't be able to shoot over their, their shoulder. They'll have to move and then shoot. And if I do that with my bow people, we won't get two shots. So I'm going to just push spacebar to wait. Okay. And then I can shoot here 18%, or if I do an aim shot, it's 32% chance. So these are really bad chances to hit, but I'm going to try them anyway. Wow, we got lucky there. Okay, great. Uh, and we'll take it. And then 17% chance to hit. 
Uh, let's take it and let's try it again. All right, we missed. Okay, no worries. And then I'm going to... Let's see, if I move here and then here and then this guy goes here. This dude can go here. But it's hard for this guy to get down into the battle very easily. I'm going to move him here for now and push spacebar. Now this guy can actually go here and get one spear attack in like that. And this thing is almost gone. I could have waited and moved and then done my spin attack, but because the spin attack takes six AP, I couldn't move and hit two uh, wolves with it, so this is just fine. Oh, he dodged it. Ouch. And I will move here. And let's try to stun this guy. Ouch. Uh, go ahead and move here. Now, we really need you to hit. Oh, but we didn't kill. Man, that's... A, I cannot believe we weren't able to kill this one wolf right here with the, the amount of hits that we put onto it. That's brutal. Now, I could move all the way around here to completely... I'm going to try this. So, you see how its will is breaking? If I move here... It will prevent it from really running away. It'll be super surrounded. And then its will will get even worse. And then we'll just go ahead and wait. Now they're going to get some hits on us because they're fast. Oh, and they're coming right over to our archers. Well, that... To be honest, though... Um, okay, let's see how badly we've been hurt there. So check this out. Uh, miss. We got hit. We only got hit once. So that's actually really fortunate for us. And who got hit? Ferdinand. Okay. So anyway, we're going to try to put this one down. Almost down. Okay, that one's dead. Now, this wolf is on our archer. So when the wolves or any enemy gets right up on your archer, they can't fire uh, without significant uh, penalties. So that's a problem, but... I uh, let's see. We're going to move over here. And I'm still... My buddy is still in the way if I fire. So I'm going to move here. And then I can fire... I can't believe my ally is still blocking line of fire from there. That's a shame. I'm going to try it anyway. Okay. And I'm going to move... I'm going to move the axe guy right here. And swing... And I'm doing... Oh my gosh, we got a good hit. I'm doing that because he can't move two squares and swing because the axe takes up so much. But I'm going to go back here and I'm going to go like this. Okay, we got a good hit. And we'll wait. And then we can fire right here. Oof, missed that 51. That is a shame. We'll wait. All right. And do you have... Yeah. So we can switch to this sword. And then take a, an attack with the sword that we've got. That's why you want to give your bow people a backup melee weapon. And we'll just go ahead and, you know, try to hit. And we did hit. Now this spear folk will come down. And we're going to just try to put in an attack right there and almost kill the wolf. All right. And now, uh, how many attacks can you do? You can do two. We're just going to try to bash this thing into oblivion. Oh. I cannot believe that. It, it I mean it has it's got to have zero hit points. Look at the bar for hit points. That seems a shame right there. All right. Almost did not not almost did kill that guy. So we lost a brother uh right away. Now that was the new brother that we just picked up. <laughs> uh Okay, we don't have enough to attack. There we go. Somebody finish that guy. All right, there we go. There it is. 16% chance to hit, huh? Um, 
the rain is, uh, I believe, also what's killing us. There we go. No, he's just bad with the bow. All right, so Gunbert, our new brother, is Deadbird. And that's a shame, but that's what happens. So we ended up losing some money right there for that guy, but we're going to need to replace him. All right, so let's get the loot. And hey, look, all this found loot that we acquired, that's all from our own brother. So we'll just pick it all up and give it to another person that we hire. Sometimes, and quite probably, you're going to hire people in this game, and they're just going to be meat shields, which means like their stats are bad. You don't even want them in the end game. They're going to get outpaced by better brothers that you can hire later when you have more money. So you just need some people to kind of go with you for a bit and help turn the tide. And that guy did his job. He fought, he took hits, and he prevented one of our better brothers, one of our starting brothers, from dying. So that was a, a job well done. Now, like I said, we saved a game before this. So if you wanted to reload it and do a better job of trying to protect your archers, you, I kind of like moved out and left the archers by themselves. If you wanted to try to fight that again where you didn't lose anyone, that's up to you. That's entirely your choice. Uh, but I'm going to go in the spirit of Battle Brothers and just be like, all right, well, that guy didn't make it, and we'll get another one. That's, you know, c'est la vie. Having killed the foul creatures, you begin skinning and scalping them. Gruesome creatures require gruesome evidence. All right, so we've got crowns to collect, so let's go back to town and collect. But by the way, before we go back, though, let's push I to go to our screen. And uh, Adler the Black has leveled up, so we can level him up. And uh, we want to put points to make him more accurate with his bow. Uh, I'd like to give him some more health. And what else seems incredibly important for this person? Uh, let's do initiative so that he goes faster with that bow. And then we're going to go to perks. And I always like fast adaptation uh, for my ranged people because this just helps them hit next time. Get back to Salt Kai and give him the news. All right, so what we get as a reward is 380 crowns, which is phenomenal. But they also no longer have disappearing village villagers. So we can look at this, and in the town, um, we can actually hire better people because of that. And it might be worth our while to just take a look at their marketplace and see if any of the prices have become more favorable to us. So... Uh, right now, for example, these this food right here, because we're low on food, this is actually uh, has gone down in price. Things have become a little bit cheaper. Not all of it, but this is just right around where it should be. This has also gotten much cheaper. Do you remember how expensive this was before? So by completing some quests here, getting some goodwill in this town, um, our prices have moved into the realm of the plausible. Now, here's a piece of advice. If you give your troops a variety of food, so you don't just feed them the same thing, like so they have like ham and roots and berries and grains and venison and bread, like just let's say they had a whole bunch of different things to choose from, they can actually get a morale boost because they have so many good pieces of food to eat. Now, I unfortunately am low, so I'm just going to have to buy them these grains, and they're not going to be thrilled about it, but that's, that's what we've got to buy. Okay, now uh, we need to hire a new brother, so I'm going to leave this. But let me go into my inventory, and let me see here. Does anybody have a shield that's full? Yeah, okay. I'm going to uh, just swap these shields like this. And I'm going to go back to the marketplace, and let's just see. Yeah, we're getting 17, so we want this to be higher for this to be a great town, but it's not bad. Now, another thing that we can do is we can, if we want, open up and a notepad for this town. And we can just say, all right, we're going to leave this, and this is Salt Kai. 
and we're going to say, what does Salt Kai have? And just keep notes on these towns that are around. Salt Kai has um, a, a marketplace, obviously. They have a tavern, a harbor, a barber, and you can hire. So we can just, you know, say marketplace, tavern, barber, hire. And in the marketplace, they've got um, amber shards that they're bought that we can buy for 281. So I'm just going to keep track of this amber 281. You can also keep track, like to see if people have cheap, you know, ammunition. They don't cheap tools. They don't. But you can keep track of these rates. So it could be helpful. Um, for example, I'm just keeping this little notepad file right here to write this stuff down and then you can ferry trade between them. And it also is nice to just remember what kind of service each town provides so that you can make better decisions when you're buying gear or you're selling stuff or whatever it might be. So you could keep track of like who's giving you good prices, who has good supplies or um, you know, good trade goods for sale. Now, of course, keep in mind, these prices fluctuate dramatically based on what's going on. So if they have some kind of event, something they've been raided or whatever it might be, the prices could go up or down based on uh, random events that can happen. All right, so I'm going to hide this notepad and we will just say, okay, leave. And let's see who we, we can hire. We need to get a replacement. Uh, these are the same folk that we saw before. Sigbold might be good. He's a monk. Um, that's fine. He's not used to warfare, but he's cheap. You're in, monk. All right, we're going to go to inventory, and we're going to check out this guy. Uh, yeah, he's god-awful with a bow. Now, Ferdinand was hurt in the last battle. You see he has light wounds. And um, Bjarn is fine. He will heal in one day, so that's no problem. All right, even though Sigbold's terrible, I'm just going to put him in the back row, and I'm going to give him this and we're going to give him this and uh what's this 20 armor uh that's you know better than most of the stuff we've got so here you go all right we're going to call it a day and let's check they have another one skull contract to get what is this um the people of salt Kai are furious do you know a brigand, possibly in league with other vagabonds, managed to steal my golden talisman? It's of immeasurable value to me. And, and to the people, of course. I love how he's like, everybody's so upset. So we need to go kill brigands. And we need to go get him his golden talisman. Now, these are the kinds of missions that I like early in the game. Because if you kill humans, then there's a good chance that they drop their loot so we can get better gear for our people. What's it worth? He's going to pay 360 and I'm going to, again, accept it without any negotiation, hoping to gain favor in this town and better prices. So we need to follow the tracks near Salt Kai, get the talisman, and we get 360. I accept it. All right. So I'm okay with the amount of brothers that we have, and we only have one brother who's kind of hurt. Here's the tracks down here. So we should be fine, but I don't want to do this quest um, if it becomes too late at night. So again, I'm going to save the game and just be smart because I don't want to get wiped out. I mostly just save the game so that I don't get a full party wipe. Now, again, you might not mind, um, but it hurts my feelings. So I don't want to lose all my progress, especially when I'm learning the game. All right, now these tracks are going way over here, but we're following them. We're not looking for animal tracks. We're looking for people tracks. So we're going to keep following these tracks until we find... Um, yep, there they are right there. Now there's seven of them. That's a lot. So if this is too much, we can load our save and go hire another person or two to help with this. But okay, it's actually... You know what? It's getting... Well, let's see how bad it is at dusk. I don't really want to fight right now, but we're going to do it. Okay, many thugs. So they don't have any poachers. So this is all melee for them. Ooh, we got some elevation. Okay, cool. We can put our archers up high. Uh, 
and try and take advantage of this. So let's just take a survey of the field. Honestly, they only have one person with a shield, which is really good for us. And the cleavers, they don't have any weapons that are like unbelievably terrifying. So I think we should be okay, but again, the rolls are going to be important here. So we're going to just wait with everybody. Now, uh, Burnfried right here, I'm actually going to move him up to this and just wait. Now they're going to run in. Okay. And I'm going to move back and wait. And let's just see how this goes. All right, they're coming pretty close here. Okay. And I'm going to leave this guy right here. No, no, no. I can move. Well, I don't want anyone to get on this tile. So, I'm going to just wait. And let's see. Okay, here they come. All right. Uh, let me go ahead and... The question here is, do we want to defensively use shield wall and spear wall and stuff and just wait and let them come? Or do we want to step forward and start trying to kill some? I'm going to make that decision later. I'm going to pass with this guy. Now, I could step right here and swing and hit two, uh, which could massively influence the outcome of the battle. But it could also be a big disaster. Oh, no, I hit my buddy. Yeah, it's so hard to hit them and not hit your buddy. So I'm going to wait and let the archers determine. Okay, so where do we want to soften them up? I probably want... Well, we have the best chance to hit this guy. Okay, so we hit him, and we hit him really hard. We'll wait. And then, can you hit anybody... Uh, you have a reasonable chance to hit right here. Now, sometimes what you can do is you can fire your arrows into a group of enemies, and then even if you miss, you might hit one of the other ones. Okay, but he managed to miss everybody. He's the monk. He's new. Let's just, you know. I'm going to go ahead and spear wall. Let's just leave it as is. And can you hit anybody? 34% chance. Let's try to Yes. Okay, that's what we wanted to do. It's so important if you can just take somebody out the first turn. You see their morale start to waver. And we'll just wait. And I'm actually going to go here. And we're going to spear wall. And we're going to spear wall. And wait. And I'm going to shield wall. Wait. And axe man. I'm going to wait. He doesn't have a defensive maneuver. All right, so he's trying to hit us, but we have a shield. Okay, so we're going to shoot. And let's see. Let's go. This is 78% chance to hit. Oh, wow. What a shot. Reload. Good. And here they come. Now, he got popped by the spear wall. You see that? Let's look at this. So what happened is um, he came and he got hit by our spear wall, and he is now back there. So the spear wall did good work. And I'm going to wait with the axe. And we're going to see. Can I hit anybody? We have a 34% chance. Try it again. All right. We unfortunately missed. Okay. Spear wall done. Um, let's see. When do they go? They're going to go right here. I'm actually just going to go back to spear wall and just wait. And can you hit anybody here? I mean, theoretically you can. But you've been rolling very badly. You perform badly. All right, go ahead and do spear wall again. It's killing our fatigue. But if we can just hold right here, this could be a big deal. Uh, let's see. Do we want to try? I want to try to knock this guy out. Boy, that's four misses on this guy. What a turkey. Look at that. Look at that. Look at spear wall. I mean, every time, look at Spearwall. 
Look at it happening. Okay, well, now it's not happening. That was amazing. All right. So, I want you to just hit this guy. Yeah, that's a good hit. And... Uh, try to kill this guy. He's dead. All right. And we're on spear wall, so we'll just rest. We'll just rest. Ouch. I'm going to try to kill that guy. We got him. Eight to four. Their morale is not really shaking that much, though. These guys are pretty salty. All right. Can you hit anybody there you go got your first hit it was a good moment in combat for you all right um i'm actually going to take a step do i want to do that you'll be surrounded no let's just wait yeah that was bad for that guy the two spearmen on him the fact that we missed this guy four times and couldn't do any damage that's just unfortunate all right Go. Nice shot. Sniped it. All right. And just try to hit that guy. It's a miracle shot. All right. That guy is just about gone. I'm going to move in. Spear wall. Wait. This guy's got shield wall up. I'll oh, spear wall and wait. And we'll wait. And axe man, you can actually move here and try to finish this guy. Oh, what a miss. Brutal. This guy has been annihilating us. All right, let's see if we can. Can you finish this guy? That is a finish. All right, seven to two. All right. This guy's got a shield wall up, so I'm not, like, super interested. Now, if I move out of this guy's threatened range, though, it could be bad. So what we're going to do is um, do the uh, split shield on this dude, and then there goes his shield. All right, we're just going to spear this guy. And notice now this is fatigue. So we did so much spear wall. Look, this is the first time it's impacted us. 56 out of 65. So we can't actually attack again, even though we have the action points, because of the fatigue. So we just wait. Now you, unfortunately, have to switch over to your sword and just try to take a chop right here. Oh my goodness. Talk about a chop. The head flew off. All right, that monk is battle-tested now. All right, we're going to... Nah, we can't hit this guy without really hitting our own person at this point. So I'm just going to wait. Oof. That almost cost me, but there really wasn't much I could do. All right, now this person has got no shield, so we can just walk up and surround them. Again, though, you can see the fatigue from doing so much spear wall is just catching up with us. The only thing I can do is try to move all the way down here and take a shot like this. And that was a good attempt. And we don't have any more AP. All right. Can we get it? Uh, we have to step down and fire over the shoulder. And then we did it. Okay. So we lost Ferdinand, which is really unfortunate. That was the wild man that we hired. Uh, but... You know, this is how it goes at the beginning. Uh, it wasn't a perfect fight. Maybe we were a little bit too defensive, but we're just feeling it out, and we're just going to replace this person. That's just all there is. But we had three people level up. So we say, great. Now, what loot did we get? Look at this. We got a nice full leather cap. Amazing. Uh, and we got some other stuff that maybe we can sell. Not insane. We already have militia spears. The reinforced wooden flail is pretty good, though. I might want somebody with that. And we will leave. And we completed the 
mission, which is the main thing. So uh, we got the Golden Talisman, so now it's time to go back. I'm going to go here, though, and we can level everybody up. So the Fisher has been leveled up. So we're going to do melee. We're going to do hit points. And what else do we want from you? I like how you're actually good with the bow. You're like, oh, I'm great with the bow. Well, we just saw the power of fatigue, so let's do that. And then perks... Let's, you're a frontline fighter, so let me give you Colossus. And then my buddy Bjarn, we can level you up. And you, this, this, and this, just the same smattering. And you're a frontline fighter, so let's give you 25% more health. And then back here, Burn Freed. Ooh, yeah, get that plus four to your bow. Um, go initiative, and then uh, get some extra health. That's fine. And then we'll take fast adaptation so you can hit better. Okay, good. Now we have some people who are hurt. Let me switch this over to our main weapon, by the way. Uh, this is... will never be of confident morale because he's insecure. I mean, that's terrible, is what it is. He does have iron lungs, I guess. All right. Um, so we've got some injuries without question. Okay. We need to get back home. Uh, light wounds and light wounds. It's really just light wounds, though, for a day. So I'll try to get back. We could just champ out if we wanted to. We should be fine, though. We need to get to friendly relations with a civilian faction. And right here, you can see our relations are open with Salt Kai. Um, and, oh, I'm sorry, our relations are neutral with them. But we can continue to do quests for them and hopefully just become the best of friends. All right. 360 crowns. Well deserved. You know it. Alright. So now all they have is this two skull contract, which I'm not really interested in that right now, but let's check out the marketplace. Alright, they're still giving us the same questionable prices. Let's look at any of their food. We're running low on supplies. They're so expensive here. I'm going to buy roots and berries just to get a more um, variety pack on food. And I'm not going to buy anything else from this town. It's too expensive. Um, but look at this. We fulfilled our ambition because we became friendly. So b this it gives us renown. And one of our people is up in spirits. So... Um, So, deciding that Salt Kai is a good place for you to invest your efforts, you decide to offer the protection of the company and take up any work suitable to your talents. You act like a gentleman in your dealings with the locals and encourage the men to find their manners while in the settlement, or mind their manners. There was, of course, some griping at first. Oswald was sorely disappointed to give up brawling with the farmers, especially with the Tutorial Brothers spending so much time here, but you convinced the men that having a friendly base of operations is important in your line of work as it meant getting better prices on the market and more people willing to join your motley band. It's also much less tiring not having to dodge the militia all the time. You've even enlisted the men to do some small tasks in exchange for nothing but goodwill. So they found a boy, they did some washing, and now we have completed our ambition. So we'll get another one. But if you go into our... You could see, like, everybody's in really good spirits. Everybody's pretty much also healed. Now, we need another frontline fighter. Do you have anybody to hire here? Who do you have left? They do. They're quite costly. Uh, but we can get Conrad uh, for the front line. He's only 8 per day. It's not bad. He is 420 up front. Which is, you know, not ideal. I think what we want to do is actually go to back to Crumhorn and see if we can get somebody for cheaper. It's just not worth it right now. To try to hire that person. 
So I'm going to speed it up and get back to Crumhorn, see what's available there. We need another brother in the front line. All right, those do not fight those. Those are like zombie monkeys. They're very challenging. All right, so now we can come back here. What do they have? They got raided and they're rebuilding. Ugh. So that means that all their stuff is going to be like ultra expensive. Actually, their arrows aren't that bad. But look, they're only giving 15 for a shield. So that's not what we're looking for. Okay. Now I am going to buy this hood. It's cheap. Now we're okay on arrows. And let's see. Do you have anybody to hire? Uh, you've got this fisherman. He's cheaper. We'll take it. Alright. And then we're going to go into our team. And we'll put the fisherman up here. Like this. Okay. So you can see that we've got some frontline fighters. Like this guy. This is 30 armor. This is... Uh, 45 armor, so you can have that instead. And then you've got this terrible hat. Put that on instead. And the, the monk has nothing, so put that on your head. Very good. And then you, buddy, uh, you actually have pretty good armor, but we're going to give you a shield, and we'll give you this reinforced flail. And then you can have uh, the throwing net as your backup in case anyone tries to run. And that's pretty strong. Now, you have a backup, you have a backup, you have a backup. Yeah, I think this is fine. All right, great. So now, uh, they have a two-skull contract, so we're going to move on from this. But the good news is we got our team kind of, like, you know, balanced back around together. And we're not going to just buy everybody because look at our money. Like, we can't run out of cash here. So we're going to go check some other towns, see if they have some easier stuff to do for us, and keep building up, leveling up. And look at this. Along the way, um, we're going to have an opportunity for, you know, growing. And this somebody is coming to tell us... Um, that maybe we want to join, like, the guild masters and councilmen are running uh, the villages have a good memory. We depend on them. So we need some friends, and we're saying, like, okay, maybe we want to make friends with people to get better relations with the nobles and be able to do quests for, or contracts for the walled cities. So we say, okay, I'll keep it in mind. And let's just check Maltberg. And we'll get into that next time. Everyone, I think this is a good place to end this episode of our Complete Beginner's Guide to Battle Brothers. We are, you know, losing brothers, but replacing them, not losing the main ones, and fulfilling our ambition, and building up our inventory of good loot, of stronger people, and trying to develop uh, a good money supply so that we can keep growing our band. I'd like to have around 12 brothers eventually, to just have a you know a nice supply of people in the front and the back lines. But it's going to take a while before we can afford that, before we can feed that. So that's what we're going to be working to. Everyone, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're still finding this to be helpful. Take care.